And this is a poem called Lake Water. It is a summer afternoon in October. I am sitting on a wooden bench, looking out at the lake through a tall screen of evergreens, or rather, looking out across the plain of the lake, seeing the light shaking upon the water as if it were a shimmering of heat. Yesterday when I sat here, it was the same, the same displaced, out of season effect. Seen twice, it seemed a truth was being told. Some of the trees I can see across the lake have begun to change, but it is as if the air had entirely given itself over to summer with the intention of denying its own proper nature. There is a breeze perfectly steady and persistent blowing in towards shore from the other side or from the world beyond the other side. The mild sound of the little tapping waves the breeze has caused, there's something infantile about it, a baby at the breast. The light is moving and not moving upon the water. The breeze picks up slightly but still steadily. The increase in the breeze becomes the mild dominant event compelling with sweet oblivious authority alterations in light and shadow, alterations in the light of the sun on the water which becomes at once denser and more quietly excited like a concentration of emotions that had been dispersed and scattered and now were not. Then there's the mitigation of the shadow of a cloud and the light subsides a little as if into itself. Although this is like a lake, it is as if a tide were running mildly into shore. The sound of the water so softly battering against the shore is decidedly sexual in its liquidity, its regularity, its persistence, its infantile obliviousness. It is as if it had come back to being a beginning, an origination of life. The plane of the water is like a page on which phrases and even sentences are written. But because of the breeze and the turning of the year and the sense that this lake water, as it is being experienced on a particular day, comes from some source somewhere beneath, within itself, or from somewhere else nearby, a spring, a brook, its pure origination somewhere else. It is like an idea for a poem not yet written and maybe never to be completed because the surface of the page is like lake water that takes back what is written on its surface. And all my language about the lake and its emotions or its sweet obliviousness or even its being like an origination is all erased with the changing of the breeze or because of the heedless passing of a cloud. When moments after she died, I looked into her face. It was as untelling as something natural, a lake, say, the surface of it unreadable, its sources of meaning unfindable anymore. Her mouth was open as if she had something to say, but maybe my saying so is a figure of speech.